Well, I'd like to welcome now to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center, I believe Bill Fisher is in the building. Bill Fisher, thanks for coming hey, in. How are you? Thanks I, for having me. I appreciate it. As promised, you can see the Superman building. We can see the Superman building. The lantern is lit, three and a half stories. Uh, Probably the largest light bulb in the in the city. The so. lar is that just one light bulb? Oh no, it's about <laughs> it's a few hundred light bulbs. But the lantern is lit uh, quite early tonight. That familiar uh, bluish green beacon um, that we all can see on the horizon when we return to Rhode Island. Thank you for having me in studio. Well, I appreciate your coming in and want to talk about what's going on with yeah. Superman. You've been doing tours, tours, tours. Yeah, um, the tours have been uh, wildly popular. I mean, David Sweetser is the principal of of High Rock Development, they are the owner of the building uh, over this journey that started in 2013 when Bank of America left. Um, David has continued to try to find a way to open up the building for, for public good, for civic good. Uh, uh, the leadership Rhode Islanders had forums there, Providence Preservation Society has had uh, meetings there and, 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 and things like that. We have uh, the Wilbury Theater is going to come in and have a fundraiser for their fundraising group uh, down the stretch, but the tours um, have been very popular. Um, we thought they'd be popular, but we didn't think that, you know, hundreds of people would be clicking on their mouses simultaneously and selling out, you know, not selling, people reserve, because it's, it's a free, <laughs> it's a tour, free tour, tour, but reserving tickets, 300, 400 tickets in a matter of five minutes. It's been amazing. Uh, we had a tour last Saturday. I stopped by to uh, see some of the folks, and uh, they were very, uh, they're very happy. Everybody walks in there, and they, there's a, there's a, there's a connection to the building, and um, I think that's what's been lost in this in this kind of four year discussion that we've had about what's going to happen to the building, how we're going to repurpose it. There is a cultural connection to this building. Everybody has a Superman story. If you go stand in Kennedy Plaza, you know people start telling me stories about you know going there with their father and mother to cash their check and all those sorts of things. So um, David has been very good about opening up the building and we're, we're happy so many people have been uh, interested in it. So it's been, uh, it's, been a, it's been a pretty exciting thing. The next tour is on March 4th. Unfortunately, uh, it's sold, sold out. out. <laughs> yeah. Will you be doing more tours? Will you be announcing We're going to take a look at the schedule. Um, it takes a lot of work to, to make that happen. We don't want people to wander the building. Uh, unescorted and the elevator can only hold about 11 at a time so we'll move three or four groups through with three or four different tour guides so they're in various uh, parts of the building. The view up on the 25th and 26th floor is extraordinary. You can see out to um, you know to Fall River you can see the cooling towers at, at Brayton Point and you can you can see the landfill in Johnston so it's quite a view. <laughs> now I'd, I'd heard we had uh, Mayor Correa from Fall River in to talk with us and he said from his office in Fall River he could see yeah the yeah building. and wherever you come into the city whether it's on Allen's Avenue or whether you're coming down 146 or 95 or coming back from Boston you always see that that beacon. It's it's kind of everywhere. It's almost positioned in the city where no matter what thoroughfare you're coming down, whether it be Broadway, Allen's Avenue again, it's it's there. It's been a prominent fixture on our horizon since 1927. I've been working on this project as part of the, the spokesperson and providing public relations for the development team since 2013. And I've kind of fallen in love with the building. I care about it. I want to see it saved. I want to see it functioning again. So it's, it's become somewhat of a mission. Um, so what do we need to do? What are the next steps we've seen? Potential this year, plans and asks put forth I, before. You know, I think this year is a little bit different. We're, 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 we're not up at the General Assembly pushing a, a particular piece of legislation right now. Instead, we're focused and we're very optimistic on uh, a handful of commercial tenants that mm -hmm. are interested in the building. And those discussions are robust right now. And so we've made uh, the governor and leadership in the House and Senate aware of these discussions. They haven't been finalized yet, uh, but there is, I would say, more interest from a commercial office use right now than there has been in the previous four years. And our goal is to try to bring those, those uh, negotiations to a successful conusion. The building is 380,000 square feet. As I keep looking up here. Yeah, I keep you looking up the building too. To get on your mark I here. keep looking <laughs> up the building too. But it's 380,000 square feet. And if we can cobble together an anchor tenant or tenants of, say, 150, 175,000 square feet, 
Um, that would be great news for the city. It would be great news for the state. It would bring jobs to the building. And I think from there, we can talk about what a development would look like, whether the remaining uh, portion of the building would be uh, residential, whether we could fill it entirely with commercial. Certainly the first few floors would be uh, retail uh, and, and a restaurant space. Um, so that, that's the plan right now. That's where our focus is right now is those commercial discussions. Any discussions with nonprofits to get any portion of the building, or is it simply commercial residential at this point? Well, I think right now, um, certainly a nonprofit could be a user of office space for sure. The question is, you know, we need this this anchor tenant that, that, to, that will help us secure the, the financing, that will bring the jobs, that I think will turn this discussion around, which has been, uh, unfortunately, I think a little too negative at times. The building sitting empty does not serve anyone. It what does, is it, what's it, it cost to it, keep the building up and running it, on a monthly since basis? Since Bank of America left, uh, we've expended about $5 million in maintenance, uh, utilities, security, uh, inspections to make sure the building is, uh, the exterior of the building is safe. Um, you know, $5 million over a cost of, of four years um, and with no rent coming in. We do have one tenant, we have a, a falcon up at the 428 feet up and uh, he's he gets regular visits from the Audubon Society but he doesn't really pay a lot of rent. Was there so. a Falcon cam up there? Am I making that up? There may have been. I'm not sure if there is. There's the, I think there's a Falcon cam somewhere in the city. I'm not I, sure I hear Molly O'Brien chirping in thinking that there is a, is there yes. a Falcon cam? Yeah, there is. Yes, there is. Dog Thank dog. you for that confirmation. Mo Molly. Molly knows all things animal. Yeah. Did you know we have penguins in here? No, I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't see any in the green room. <laughs> we had penguins in here. That was the other week. She brings in the best of the animals. Right. So how does that look then? So and trying to secure that anchor tenant, yeah. making an announcement, yeah. um, securing clearly an ask from the state, a, a partnership, I'm assuming, right. for some incentives to get that anchor tenant in that building. Right. Well, I think you've seen a lot of success in, in, in downtown Providence and elsewhere lately. You've seen... Uh, tenants moving into the Providence Journal building and taking advantage of re, uh, uh, existing uh, tax incentives at the Commerce Corporation. There, there's a path there. There's a model there for us to follow. I think, you know, we everybody has a different opinion about incentives, but we're surrounded by municipalities that are offering them. And it's not just Boston. It's, 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 it's you know, cities the size of Worcester that that offer incentives. And so everybody is competing in this region to try to bring companies here. And Providence uh, and Rhode Island, I think, have seen a real boost when the General Assembly and the governor got behind these re uh, rebuild RI tax credits and those tax incentives that commerce now has. And so can we take advantage of that path? Can we help attract a commercial tenant to the building who can take advantage of these existing programs. Those are the discussions we're having right now. And I think it's helped turn around interest in the building, quite frankly. So should an uh, anchor tenant be secured and, and yeah. get into them some commerce, is there still a need to go to the city? Is there still a need to go to the state house right. for additional pieces of this puzzle? It, it's undetermined at this time because in these discussions, we're not sure how much, how much of the building can be consumed. We're optimistic. We'd love to make an announcement tomorrow that we've got two tenants coming Here, in and they're, local. and they're and they're going to consume 200,000 square feet of the building and that would certainly change the conversation that would you know we're talking about you know we started this conversation off in 2013 talking about residential development because we knew that Providence was in need of rental housing we knew the market was there we knew the banks would finance uh, such a project we also knew there was about at that time uh, north of 20 percent uh, vacancy in the in the office market. So putting another 380,000 square feet of office on the uh, on the market didn't help. Now that office uh, space, that office uh, market, that's improved somewhat over time, and it's helped us to have conversations once again with uh, potential commercial tenants. And so, what the rest of this year looks like from an incentive standpoint, from going back to the General Assembly, the honest answer is we don't know. The focus right now is secure that commercial tenant to have some good news, to get some energy around this building, to talk about, you know, just it would change this neighborhood, this landscape right now. It would, you know, hundreds of people shopping, hundreds of people leaving, going out to lunch, and, you know, it changes the... Uh, the nature of Kennedy Plaza, you're adding hundreds of, of, of workers into this dynamic right now. That's our goal, you know. 
get the building um, contributing once again to, to Rhode Island's economy. It, sitting there empty, it doesn't help anyone. So Now, there have been a number of names tossed out from PayPal uh, yeah. to URI and their innovation center. Right. Um, where do you say, where would you, do you see yourself if, if you're a football player and you're Tom Brady in the 50-yard line and you're marching towards the end zone? Yeah. Are you in the 50? You on the 40? You on yeah. the 30? Where are you in the process of the talks? Well, with these PayPal folks? was something that uh, those those discussions and interest continues. That's something that uh, I believe it was the Commerce Department confirmed an interest in, in not only the building but coming to Rhode Island, and so that's out there. The other commercial tenants I can't disclose. I can tell you that we're more optimistic than we've ever been, and those conversations are robust. I'd like to say we're on the one yard line, <laughs> but we're progressing and okay. we're moving in the right direction. I'm, I'm very hopeful we will have some positive news in a few months and I think that would be you know, welcome news for, for not only the city, but, but the state. Leaving the tallest building in the, in the, in the, in the, in the state vacant, uh, it, it's, just, it's, it's not good for the economy, but it's, it's not good for the state's image, I think, to have this building vacant for so long. We're, we're entering year four now. So. And of course, I'm sure you might expect some opposition from the usual folks who have been opposed yeah. to any corporate subsidies, um, Libertarian Party at uh, some of the walkthroughs. Um, again, is it? Do you all think all three of them have been down to uh, <laughs> to protest? We've... Well, th there have oftentimes been a diverse group of folks who have gotten behind issues. Right. Uh, do you think it all depends on the ask that you put forth if that comes to that point? At that yeah. Time? Look, everybody has a, a different in interpretation of incentives. Um, I happen to believe that they're they're helping turn Rhode Island's economy around right now. We had a a, a vacuum of cranes, constructions, and development, construction and development in Rhode Island, when the historic tax credit program um, was was terminated because it back I think in 08 because the Rhode Island was entering the recession, uh, we had uh, the state had money problems and they could no longer fund that. So what happened between 08 and and say two years ago? Not a lot, right? Now we get uh, we get the economy moving again. We got we got companies coming in. We've got job creation. We've got these new tax incentives. So I think they work. Look at Boston. They're going through their third largest growth and expansion period in the city's history. If you go to Google Boston Redevelopment Authority, and you'll find the incentive programs they offer. So in incentives attract jobs. They attract companies. They attract uh, private investment that that will get us going again. So. You know, I, I'm not going to focus on the negative uh, today, uh, and we're not. I, and I know we're not going to convince everybody that you know incentives are a good thing for the economy. Uh, but the reality is, is that um, as we enter, we're now in 2017. Um, conversations are are robust. There's interest in the building, and uh, you know we're we're pretty we're cautiously optimistic to have some good news this year. I'm not going to focus on the negative today. Okay. Well, I hope when you have some announcement and some news, you yeah. come back down to the studio here and, yeah. and let us know and, and let folks know. You do know that we ask everyone a trivia question. No, I didn't. Yeah. yeah I'll probably, did, did I forget to uh, I'll probably this? boot this. <laughs> I'll probably boot this. So this is a, a game called Day Trip, and it's all Rhode Island trivia. Just like ask to you know see what folks know about Rhode Island. Pick and, a card, any card. I better pick a good one. <laughs> right. How tall is the Superman building? <laughs> Wait a minute. That's 428 feet tall. <laughs> so I don't know when this game was put out, but that's a, a, a very interesting question. Um, and, and 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 here's a kind of apropos question. <clears throat> Which windy downtown Providence Street follows the original Pequot Trail where generations of Native Americans traveled, Way Bossett or Westminster? Way Bossett or Westminster? I, whew, let me think about that for a second. I'd go with, uh, I'm going to go with Way Bossett. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That Bill was a guess. Fisher. That was a bit of a guess. God, well, I, you know, I was like, here it's very appropriate as we are at 90 Way Bossett here. Yeah. Um, there's some interesting questions. Like one said, what Channel 10 weatherman has been on the air for 59 years? And it was Art Lake. Art Lake. <laughs> so That's a bit dated. I don't know. What That's this. a bit dated. These are dated. Some of the trivia, though, doesn't change. I right. mean, let's be honest. It's trivia. Right. So, Bill Fisher, I appreciate your coming in today to talk appreciate about it. the Superman building. We appreciate shall it. talk with you soon. Thank you. Giving folks an update of as where they're at. So, I'll let you around the corner back to the task at hand. Take okay, care. Okay, thanks, Bill. <sighs>
That was Bill Fisher, who handles the public relations for the Superman building here. And David Sweetser, now he's been with them since 2013, gave us a little update as to where they're at with, again, the vacant building that they've been having wildly popular tours in conjunction with the Providence Preservation Society to uh, let folks check out the building, but spoke with us about feeling very optimistic about securing an anchor tenant or tenants. Um, originally, the plan uh, unveiled several years ago had been primarily residential, but as Bill told us here on the show, focusing more on trying to get uh, office use and businesses into the building, talked about um, a restaurant and retail space on the first floor. And as we said, kind of looking up here, you guys can't see, but we can see the Superman building looming over us here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center on 90 Weight Bottom.